So I'm Paul Norman. I'm <clears throat> I made a cu couple of pieces of uh, key importing software, and I'm also on the data working group. And I'm talking about an uh, import that I did back in 2010 of addresses in a city near me uh, in Surrey, British Columbia. So up to now, no one's actually looked at a review of this import and uh, considered if it's been a success or a failure. The import was done with the best practices at the time. Probably do a bit differently now, but not substantial change. And uh, there's some details about the analysis. Um, I, I looked at the current data, the data post-import, and the data pre-import. It's an import. So, you're probably not familiar with Surrey, so it's got some geographical challenges. It's about half a million, fairly big city, and it uh, isn't really adjacent to anything with uh, the U.S. border and the Fraser River and fairly empty cities. So it kind of stands by itself. It's got a good deal of farmland, uh, not giant grain farms, small farms. These um, don't ha mappers generally don't find areas like this particularly interesting, um, but there aren't many objects, and there are also very few addresses, so those go hand in hand. There's a sizable industrial base. Um, this is also an area that generally mappers don't actually find that interesting. But there's a moderate object density. Uh, there's stuff there to map. And there's a moderate number of addresses. There's a retail and commercial, which is, in the case of Surrey, there are clumps in the city. There's about half a dozen different sort of cities within a city. And they're separated by farmland and such. And they're mainly street-facing retail or uh, strip malls like that. Uh, these have, relatively speaking, a high level of mapper interest. It's a traditional area to hold a mapping party where there are stores to map. Uh, there's a lot of objects to map there, closely spaced stores and all of the other stuff that comes with it. And there's a high density of addresses. Then there's the residential, which is uh, boring. Uh, Surrey has a lot of curving streets that, instead of a grid layout, oh, its overall structure is a grid layout, but within these large blocks, it's curving streets that you can get lost in, and it's very inefficient, and they're actually designed to be hard to get through. Uh, they're difficult to map. They're not very interesting. They've got a moderate number of objects, but they're all really build it, just residential buildings, which aren't particularly valuable. Uh, but there's a lot of addresses here, which is a problem for collecting, because as a mapper, you probably don't want to spend an, afternoon, an entire day going through a, re a residential neighborhood looking at street after a street of identical houses. It's a stereotypical suburb, basically. So back in uh, 20, 2010 or so, the city of Surrey released a bunch of open data under the PDDL license, which is a great license since I don't need to worry about it for the rest uh, at all, so I don't need to talk about it anymore. Uh, they did aerial imagery, which was useful, contours, uh, then also roads and waterways, which probably will be useful at some point in the future. Then a bunch of other stuff that's interesting if you're a developer or something like that. But they did addresses, and that's very useful. So what did they release for addresses? They released their addresses as points. They're uh, points near the front of the building, and they've got some fake positions in the strip malls, but overall they are... Uh, exceptionally good and you'd never confuse one address with belonging with something else. It's uh, not like uh, an explosion of spaghetti that you sometimes get with Tiger. Uh, 
Um, so there were, there's actually a bunch more attributes and tags of meta, metadata that don't really care about. Um, this is the details of exactly what they released. Uh, they released about 100,000 addresses, which is a lot and is more than you want to go through manually for fairly obvious reasons. Um, house number, same, I mean, that's just, they define house number the same way OSM does. Uh, street, they have contracted, we use expanded. It, it's uh, not too complicated logic to expand those. They've got a uh, building permit data for which is not exactly accurate, but it is still sometimes useful um, in some cases. They've got these addresses I IDs, which I included, and that this is probably one of the, the bigger mistakes. They're useless. Um, the city maintains them. They don't, tr they don't, um, they don't change. It's not like Tiger where you have them curating new ones, but they turn out to be useless because uh, in the code that I'm working on to update them, I don't use them at all. You have to consider the case of when there is no address ID, so you, you just make that the only case. It's easier. Then they've got a status uh, field, which um, raises an interesting question of what an address is, because they've assigned addresses to places that don't have roads. And this, I mean, the question is, are we mapping a mailing address? Are we mapping a physical address? Uh, are we mapping what the city's assigned? And I didn't answer it at the time. I'm probably going to have to because they've since dropped that field, so there's no way to tell the difference between what they call an what they used to call an active and a proposed address. But I haven't worked that out yet. And then uh, added a city tag and a source tag, which I, I, I'm iffy on the source tag is actually is actually being of any value. But those are the tags, and they were pretty. Perf they had perfection. They were pretty good. But so I had this bunch of data, put it into OSM. But so, so what? You could have if you're geocoding, which is the main use for addresses. You could get the same result if you just added it to your geocoder, so it could pull. It could fall back to the other source. That's what's done in with Tiger in the U.S. If you can't find an ad, if you query an address in Nomen Atom, and it doesn't exist in OSM, it will then search in Tiger, and it will return that if uh, as a backup. So. It's a, that's one of the special things that with addresses. Um, you don't want to have a bunch of tiger deserts. But <laughs> um, so I looked at a few metrics. I looked at uh, if addresses were merged with other data, which shows that the data is being used. I looked at if addresses were deleted, which shows that users are not put off from editing it. I looked at duplicate addresses being added, which is a continual problem I've found that you put in the address and then someone maps a shop and duplicates that address. There were some metrics that would have probably been worthwhile, except for one reason or another, I couldn't do it, look at it. I didn't look at um, POIs and buildings not merged, aside from a simple count. Um, uh, so I didn't look at stuff that wasn't merged to addresses and should have been. I don't know a way to programmatically determine these. Um, I'm interested in one, but I'm not aware of one. I also didn't look at the number of users of mapping, which was something that was suggested. Just because uh, we don't have many mappers in Vancouver, and um, it, there's no statistical validity to it whatsoever when you've got so few mappers, uh, as, and you'll see that uh, one mapper in particular is over half of the POIs. I, uh, but the anecdotal evidence is that it's not hurting. It may not be helping, though. So what was it before the import? There were two addresses in Surrey before the import. This is a city of half a million. This was in 2010, so it wasn't that long ago. It does make my, it did make the import very easy. You didn't have to conflate anything. 
because both addresses were badly formatted. Uh, they, they stuff this st stuff into the wrong tags. And the analysis is also pretty easy. So, <coughs> I looked at uh, merged addresses. So these are addresses that were merged to either buildings or POIs, where a POI is um, a sh shop equals anything, um, some values of leisure, and some values of amenity. Uh, the, the stuff you'd expect at restaurants, fast food, banks, that, ki that kind of stuff. And there were a total of uh, 200, which isn't a great number, but there were only 1,000 uh, objects of that type anyways. Um, so I look, 20% uh, of uh, the total number of uh, objects of this type had addresses merged onto them. And that holds true across both buildings and uh, both uh, both POIs. But if you look at it, I edited 60% six, of the POIs and buildings in the city. So this is a limitation of this that uh, something that makes it easy for me is and makes it harder for other people will show up as a positive on these results because I am by far the most prolific mapper in the area. I did, however, compare it to BC as a whole, which is um, which had about twenty times, uh, ten or twenty times the number of objects. Surrey is a good. Surrey is probably about ten percent of uh, BC's population, so it, it, I mean it's it's a substantial por por portion. So what I found is that. Uh, uh, in Surrey, buildings were much more likely to have addresses. POIs were slightly more likely to have addresses, but uh, it's a huge, I mean, as you can see, 4% of buildings in BC had an address versus 20% in Surrey, whereas POIs is closer at 14 and 20. And my be I believe this is because if you, to add a POI, you generally need to do a survey. And when you're doing the survey, you can collect the address. Whereas a building you can do from home, and if you, you won't have that address information. Addresses deleted. I looked at it, it wasn't particularly useful. Um, I, the three addresses deleted were all by me. Um, it, it, the problem is the city's source was extremely accurate, so you're not going to have people deleting. You shouldn't have people deleting addresses with an accurate source. You, you have them merging th from nodes onto ways, but there's still an address there. So it's not a useful metric in this case. If you had bad address data, it would be more useful. I'd rather have the good data, though. I looked at duplicate addresses and found 25. M most were in the original data. Um, I did find some duplicates added, but there were only two. But I. Back in December, when I was doing some coding, I uh, fixed up all the duplicates, and there were there were probably about 50 at the time. Um, what's fairly common is someone uh, write it, someone doing a survey, collecting the information, and adding, say, a McDonald's, and putting the address information on that node, even though right next to it there's already a node with the address information. And what they should really be doing is merging those nodes or just adding it to the existing node. Um, I'm not sure from a tools perspective what we, if there's something that we need to do in the editors to make it more obvious for adding on. Um, I also found one case where someone had demerged something that was merged. So some conclusions. Address imports offer no Im immediate gain over using the data as an alternate source in your geocoder. Uh, because you can always just add it as another source and uh, you get the same as if it was in OSM. But there is some evidence that adding the address data results in having more addresses on POIs, which is valuable because then you can say this restaurant has this address, which you can't do if it's an alternate source. Questions? <laughs>
Yes? The, okay, so the question is around best practices. So I don't think this import was what I'd consider best practices, but was a bit of a special case because there were no addresses, which makes it a bit easier. I've been working on code, and it works with address points that will, uh, when you prepare a set of addresses, it will compare them with what's in OSM, get rid of duplicates, and uh, merge addresses onto buildings. And this is what Toby used in the address import mentioned in Serge's in the last presentation. And uh, I'd say best practices would be to use mi a minimal number of tags, so not to have a dozen metadata tags like Tiger came in with, um, to skip IDs, uh, like object uh, source-specific IDs, because your address acts as a primary key, basically. Um, and to uh, use either what I wrote or something else to combine it with the existing data. I mean, there's also the standard best address merge. Yes. Uh, it's um, there. Uh, it, and it's basically a Python, it's a Python program that uh, manipulates SQL to uh, spatially match stuff. Yep. <laughs> to snap onto a what? Okay, so I don't, the question is how far is an imported address from a node? And I don't check that, and there's a couple of reasons. One is that it shouldn't lie, with OSM, it shouldn't lie exactly on the road. It should be uh, generally where the building is. And the second reason is for rural buildings, it can actually be pretty far from the road. And in those cases, you want to map the, the driveway for sensible routing. Um, there are no areas in Surrey particularly far from any from all roads, uh, and but that's just the nature of the road network. The you get addresses legitimately. The, the legitimate distance for an address to be from the road is greater than the road spacing, basically. So it's. Um, not the most useful. What would be useful is comparing the names, checking that an address is nearby um, a street of the same name. And that would be a useful QA tool because if it's not, there's probably something wrong, which uh, in all honesty, in the case of Surrey, it probably means that the road's mapped wrong uh, because I found that the roads, the addresses, th there's a, some sections of Surrey where the roads were mapped in 2008, and uh, they, they were mapped wrong. And I've been going through and fixing those off of the addresses because I know the roads are wrong. Uh, but it would be nice to have a tool to highlight these on a, well, on a worldwide basis so that you can um, maintain the addresses. And uh, wh what I have found, um, not related to this import, but is that um, adre address maintenance is important once we've got them in there. To, uh, to prevent bit rot. Not because the uh, bit rot or decay faster than, become wrong faster than other data, but because um, when, the, when they become wrong, generally at that point, they're completely useless. Whereas um, if a road's realigned and the OSM isn't updated right away, that, uh, that, uh, that incorrect road is still of some value, whereas an incorrect address is generally just worthless. Yep. <laughs>
So there have been some efforts to gather lists, uh, I think, for the top 100 cities by population in the U.S. of um, potential data sources for addresses. And it's hit and miss. Um, it's also a lot of work doing this, uh, gathering all of this stuff. Uh, and it's a lot of work converting the addresses to OSM format. It's a lot of work merging it with existing data. And uh, basically, it, it takes time. And it's time that I haven't had. I'm, I'm, I'm sh sure there are a lot of cities, particularly particularly with uh, emergency 911 efforts, which have generated address databases. It's just an issue of getting those address databases under suitable license and then processing them. I mean, in theory, all of the tools are there, just time. Yep, any questions? Yep. One of you? <laughs> Yep. Uh, in, for a geocoder, um, if you're first of all, if you're saying you're importing nodes, um, for the geocoder, it's it's identical as if you had an external source. For the buildings, um, there are some advantages in that you can say this this particular shop has this address, but it's not. I, I mean, uh, and th that's important. But from a purely geocoding perspective, it, yeah, I'm not actually sure if any of the geocoders make use of that yet. It, it it does it sort of it does for the case of just wanting to find where an address is it doesn't matter where it doesn't matter if it's an exter external source or in OSM though which is that that's the point I'm trying to make Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, so the, he's asking about what happens when you pull the data and put it into a Garmin or something. I'm actually honestly not sure if Garmin's deal particularly well or at all with multiple data sources for addresses. You might have to do some kind of pre-processing to merge them in before passing it to the Garmin tool chain, which is doable, um, but I haven't looked into that. So I, guess, I mean, there is the advantage of putting it in OSM that it is easier, but it doesn't actually get you better results. Yes? When you get into yeah, Zoom set, yeah, so his, his comment is that there's an advantage that you can render it when it's OSM. Um, yeah, yes, when you, but, um, Oh, first of all, only on a very high zoom do you have room to render addresses, and secondly, you could still you could still render it from an external source. It becomes a bit harder when you've got when you have to conflate it on the fly. Yeah, I I mean it, part of it too is I had very good I had a very good address source, and. Um, it's, when you've got a very good address source, it's harder to make improvements to it in OSM because it's good. Uh, if you had a bad address source, for example, Toby, Toby's address source, he had to get rid of a few dozen addresses because uh, they were just, they were meaningless or gibberish um, or typos or stuff like that. And if you've got an address source like that, you'd probably get more out of it in OSM where you can fix it. Yeah.
Yeah. I, I, I use a Garmin e-trex. So I'm not sure. My understanding is there are some deficiencies in the technical level of the Garmin processing tool chain that we use uh, that um, are, are being worked on to in connection with some emergency stuff where it doesn't deal particularly well with some ways of inputting addresses. So... I, I mean, if you play around with it, you can do some, you can probably get it to work. Yep. So the uh, so the question is about uh, interpolation ways, and uh, specifically uh, Canvec ones in Ottawa. So first of all, there are no, there aren't any interpolation ways from Canvec in uh, BC. There there's no uh, GeoBase or Canvec addresses in BC at all. Uh, interpolation ways are valuable, but they're not as valuable as point addresses. They're a lot quicker to input. Um, and quicker to collect since you just need to, in most cases, survey the street sign at both ends of the street and you've got your the entire street done. But um, they're not considered as good as points. And as for how they're processed, um, it's a bit of a cludge, honestly, if you go through the c code in, say, Nominatum, how they uh, actually manage to process interpolation ways. Um, basically, uh, yeah, it's, uh, and, I, and I, won't, I won't get into the exact details, but they, they do have value, just not as much as points. Okay, any last questions? Okay, 